The game of basketball, the NBA, belongs to the international players. I wouldn't say all the talent, but the Europeans have definitely, you know, you know, staked the claim to the NBA. It is a new era. The NBA being the best basketball competition in the world means it draws players from all over the globe. While Americans have traditionally dominated the league, players from abroad have become the gold standard in recent years. Let's take a look at the influx of top international talent and explain why they are taking over the NBA. In the history of the NBA, plenty of brilliant players have taken over the league despite starring out their NBA careers outside of the USA. Let's go back to 1994, which saw Akeem Olajuwon become the first non-US born player to win the MVP award. Dirk Nowitzki was the first European player to win the award in 2007. This was the same season that Tony Parker became the first non-US born player to win finals MVP. Guys like Pau Gasol, Steve Nash, and Manu Ginobili are all great examples of international players who have made huge impacts on the league. So foreign talent being influential in the NBA is certainly nothing new. But the last decade has seen a very noticeable increase in foreign talent being the best players. Of the last five MVPs, none of them were born in the United States. James Harden was the last homegrown talent to be crowned the most influential player in the NBA. Last year's finals MVP was Serbian-born Nikola Jokic, who is on course to win his third MVP award in the last four years. This season also saw Slovenian-born Luka Doncic win his first scoring title. He is looking like one of the best players and has a very bright future ahead of him. Half of the all-star starters this season were not American, and those players are all under the age of 31. So the league is continuing to get more focused on international players. The runaway winner for Rookie of the Year is French center Victor Wimbanyama, who is the most exciting prospect in 20 years. Teams are putting more and more focus on scouting from European competitions. The traditional view that European players are not physical is being put to rest. It's not just that foreign players are taking over the NBA. While in the past, they often did it with skill and speed, but now foreign born players are more physical and athletic than ever before. And the league has not seen this sort of revolution in its history, and we know that it is only going to continue. During this period, international players have risen to the top at a rate faster than ever before. I wouldn't say all the talent, but the Europeans have definitely, you know, you know, staked the claim to the NBA. It is a new era. There's no doubt about it. When you see some of the great players emanating from Europe, Europe, the fact that they play the right way. So it only makes sense that fans and teams alike are wondering how this happened. Are there any reasons why international players are making more of an impact now than ever before? For one thing, we know that the trend we are seeing today is partly down to the roots the NBA laid years ago. The NBA has been trying to grow its brand internationally for years now, and this has resulted in players getting opportunities that they would not have had in the past. The only reason why Joel Embiid got a chance is because he was spotted at a basketball camp in Cameroon by NBA player Luc Mba Amute. He helped facilitate Embiid's move to the U.S. and started off his career in basketball. Nikola Jokic was drafted before he had ever played any kind of serious professional basketball. Thanks to the increased scouting of European prospects, part of the success that we're seeing at this moment is because the league has planned it this way. There has always been talent outside of the United States. They are just being found more and more often. One of the consequences of basketball becoming a more global sport is that the leagues around the world are getting better. The reason why more attention is paid to European professional basketball is because it is being played at a higher level than ever before. Just like in the United States, prospects are developed from a very young age and are mentored in all facets of the game. There are many more opportunities for international talent than ever before, so that development is taken very seriously. The game in uh, Europe is way harder than uh, the game in the NBA. Uh, and I don't want to disrespect. Uh, the talent, obviously, in the NBA, it's uh, way higher. But the space is just... Scoring is easier in, in NBA just because of the amount of the different rules, the less space, the time. It's different basketball. It's more, it's more physical. It's less space. What I always tell people is that when you do come to Europe, the real basketball is going to show, you know, if you can really play or not. But there is one key difference in how international prospects are developed compared to American ones. 
One of the theories around why international prospects are succeeding so much in the league is down to the way they are brought through the ranks. Instead of playing against players their age throughout high school and college, exciting international prospects are thrown into senior men's basketball faster than ever. Budonis has the distinct advantage because he's been playing professional basketball since the age of 15. So when you're 15 and you're playing with men and they're beating you up and they're throwing you around and you're still, you know, looking pretty good, your confidence is at an all-time high. Soon to be three times league MVP Nikola Jokic was playing men's basketball with adults when he was just 17. This meant playing against guys with decades of basketball experience and having to handle the physicality that comes with playing against fully grown adults. One of the reasons why this season's block leader, Victor Wimbanyama, has settled in so well is that he was playing professional basketball at age 15. Well, at that age, American prospects are playing in AAU basketball where they are seen as the stars of the show, but not being challenged by those older than them. International prospects have to compete against players much better than them at an early age, while American prospects spend some of their development years playing against far inferior talent. That has contributed to the physicality difference massively in recent years. Most of the top seven footers in the NBA are international players who develop their game outside of the US. In the case of Wimby, when you've been playing against fully grown men for five years, the jump to the league isn't that big. There is much more of a focus on team play during the development of international prospects. Top European coaches are focusing on winning games. And so young prospects have to earn the right. It also helps, of course, that in Europe and across the world, the 24 second shot clock is something international players start using when they are much younger than their American counterparts. What you might not know is that international prospects do not get a shorter three point line while they're developing. It has helped guys like Luka Doncic, Nikola Jokic, and Shea Gilgis Alexander develop elite level three-point shots. International players are just more skillful than ever before. There is much more of a focus on the fundamentals and their training, and they get better experience from day one. International players come from a different system of development. So you get a player like Nikola Jokic, he sees the game differently from American centers can shoot threes, but has that incredible innate passing gene, like some of the old school centers like Bill Walton or Arvidas Sabonis, Tim Duncan. A lot more intelligence, a lot, a lot less athleticism. Whites. Uh, Euros. None of this means that U.S. players are going to get completely overtaken, no. The league is still by a far a majority born and raised in the USA. But more focus is put on international players than ever before, and there are good reasons for that. At the moment, it is hard to say whether this is just a blip or whether this is the start of a continuing trend. While the league certainly has more international players, the superstars at the top of the game are what are drawing the attention of fans and analysis alike. These guys could be looked at as exceptions, freak athletes who were born to play basketball no matter where they grew up. The USA is certainly still producing plenty of top talent. This year's NBA's draft features plenty of top American talent and the best regular season team in the NBA this season is being led by two guys who will play for the USA at the Olympics later this year. But European talent is continuing to rise through the ranks. International prospects Zachary Rissachet and Alex Saar are both in the running to be the number one pit overall pick this year and there are plenty of international players who will be drafted in the next few years. This current generation of international superstars are setting the pathway down for the future of the NBA to feature more international players. This is what the league has always been hoping for, better representation of the entire world to get more and more people watching the game. There is a very good case for the fact that this is slightly coincidental. This run of non-USA born MVPs will not continue for a whole lot longer. While you got guys like Jason Tatum, Anthony Edwards, Jalen Brunson, and Devin Booker, these are good indications that the USA still knows how to produce exciting young talent. Top colleges will likely take more examples from the European system, and we are already seeing more opportunities for US-born prospects to play professional basketball before going to the NBA. Perhaps in a few years' time, going to the G League or heading overseas is the best bet for American prospects. 
So while the NBA is currently being topped by international players, it's more likely a trend which won't last in the long run. But what do you think about the NBA having more international talent than ever before? Do you think this will continue? Put your thoughts into the comments down below, and while you're down there, hit that like button and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.